Welcome everybody to this webinar on Black Friday. We are going to be talking you through how to get the most out of the holiday season, which for most of us is the special sales season. Um, now, I know a lot of you probably have not yet packed away your bikinis or sundresses or whatever, but it is nearly time to get those winter hats and uh, gloves out of the cupboard because winter is coming. And with winter, we get a special sales season, which uh, we're very, very happy about. Um, to introduce you to who you have in front of us here, uh, here today, my name is Thomas, um, and I am from Channable. Uh, so if I can ask you just to jump, there we go. Thank you. So, hey, I'm Thomas from Channable, um, and I have the role of Accounts Executive Nordics. What does that mean? That means that at Channable, I work with hundreds of advertisers and agencies um, working in the e-commerce field, helping them get ready for their digital advertising. And of course, Black Friday is a peak season for all of them. Uh, so I'm here today to share some insights uh, to, into what I have learned from dealing with uh, a lot of advertisers and agencies, particularly in the Nordics with you guys today. And I'll allow for uh, Sevenor to introduce yourself. Thank you, Thomas. Hi, everyone. I'm Semnur. I work as a, a senior partner manager at Google uh, for our uh, compressing shopping site partner program. And before joining Google, I have uh, 12 years of experience in e-commerce and digital marketing in uh, some, so many companies that you have heard, probably Oracle, Unilever are one of them. And Channable is uh, one of our premium partners uh, that we are really like uh, proud of. And today I'm so happy to join uh, Thomas uh, with this webinar to share uh, also uh, the Black Friday and holiday season of 2024 insights and recommendations from Google so that you can get the most out of this season. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see that uh, it looks like Sevno has stopped speaking. I still cannot hear anything, but I'm assuming that means you've done your introduction. And I'm a very lucky guy because Sevno is actually going to be taking to the stage first and sharing her insights into what she thinks is uh, going to be the trends around this year's Black Friday, which gives me a little moment to fix my headset. There's always something with the technology. Um, I see just to address one of the first comment coming through, will this presentation be recorded and sent? Yes, this presentation will be recorded and sent. And before I quickly run through the agenda here, I also have to introduce a third uh, hidden member of today's team. And that is Ruth from Google, who is in the chat and ready to moderate all of the questions that come through. So from the Google perspective, any questions that you do have, please do send them through. Um, and we will take those questions as we get to them. Uh, so also thank you to, to Ruth for being in the chat. So what can you expect today? What are you gonna be taking home from today's session? Um, well, we are gonna be getting from Servnura some awesome retail demand insights from Google and their expectations for this year. We're gonna be hearing some of the consumer behavior trends, and this is more focusing on previous years and based on that, what we can expect. And of course, Sevnor also has some expert tips for optimizing the shopping campaigns. Uh, finally, I will be here to provide six uh, proven strategies for Black Friday success, sharing some of the knowledge that I have gained from working with the advertisers agencies um, in the Nordics over the last few years. So uh, with that said, I will hand over the floor to you, Sevnor, and please walk us through the uh, insights for how to kickstart your Black Friday. Sure, thank you so much, Thomas. I hope you will be able to hear me moving uh, forward. Uh, hi again, everyone. Um, so as uh, Thomas mentioned, today we will um, uncover some key insights and strategies to help you to capitalize on the peak shopping season and maximize your business's potential. So uh, let's start. In uh, 2024, uh, this year, in the half, uh, first half of the year, we see retail demand as the highest as uh, compared to the last four years in EMEA representing 8.7% uh, year-over-year growth, and uh, searches forecast also grow 4.3% uh, year-over-year. So the demand is like a uh, high, and this year, 2024, it's all about the timeline, as we see. And 2024 brings unique timing, uh, considerations, and the influence consumer behavior and your peak strategy. Early year economic indicators suggest consumers may have reduced purchasing power, impacting their spending decisions. 
while the ho holiday season presents immense opportunities for uh, for many companies, marketeers also encounter some significant challenges uh, because of that. And it's so it's essential to acknowledge these challenges and proactively address them. Uh, this also comes from the consumer behavior complexity, especially this uh, during the holiday season. As highlighted in this, uh, this statistic here, as you can see, 92% of marketeers struggle to understand at least one aspect of um, consumer behavior. Uh, and this is a huge uh, number. So the value of consumer connections can truly be felt when you better understand how consumers shop throughout, especially throughout this season. That's because we say that this, it is all about the timeline and it's going to be like a long uh, season of shopping this year that we are expecting and you the better you understand the consumers behaviors and how they shop the better value you can get uh, out of this season and uh, so that's why we kind of like uh, see the timeline as four uh, important periods and it starts uh, with uh, october to early november and this uh, this time period we have the holiday shopper as deliberate we call them and holiday shoppers want to get start early and uh, may take time for their uh, purchases. And those who are buying even more deliberately about that often purchasing so they can spend out their, uh, they, they can spread out their uh, spending throughout the year. And then uh, coming to the cyber uh, week, we see deal seeking behavior uh, starts taking off. And uh, not surprisingly, but you might uh, find deal seeking mindset reshaping the cyber period uh, for the ship, uh, shopping season. And then third part start with the December, uh, the shopper becomes more determined and holiday shoppers will do what they need to get what they want. It's the crunch time. So the omni channel strategies move to the forefront. Finally, uh, we have the like the post uh, holiday season, which is still we still see the demand coming up in this period of time. Uh, we call it as devoted mindset starting from christmas time holiday shoppers start buying for themselves and especially as you can see the statistic here 46 percent of purchases are likely to be the self gifts uh, during this period and that uh, will build the momentum momentum into the 2025. Uh, when we consider the deliberate shopper mindset the first uh, period of time starting from October that I mentioned. We often uh, default associating it solely with research and openness to new brands. While this is certainly true, true, deliberate phase is far more critical than we might initially assume. As we have seen, it's period of active decision making with shoppers not just exploring options, but actively narrowing down their choices. The graphs on the right uh, uh, here uh, illustrates this, um, illustrate this point. And this, um, and this, uh, this means shoppers are actively seeking out specific brands and products before the promotional uh, frenzy begins. For retailer, retailers, this underscores the importance of establishing strong brand awareness and positioning yourself in the shopper's consideration set early on. If you haven't made an impression by the, this time Cyber Week arrives, it becomes increasingly difficult to break through the noise as branded searches decline in this period. This pattern isn't limited to general brand searches. Even when we examine brand specific promotional queries, such as in here, like Lululemon promotion, we see same pre cyber week peak. Shoppers are clearly counting their research in advance and deciding which brands to prioritize before they even enter the peak promotional period. This highlights the need for retailers to not, also, uh, to not only uh, build brand awareness, but also to actively communicate their promotional offerings early in the season. That's really uh, important. Additionally, November and October present a prime opportunity for retailers to attract new customers and reignite relationship with absent buyers. And uh, the heightened receptivity isn't confined to the holiday season. In fact, retailers won't encounter a more open shopper base until well into Q1. This emphasizes the critical importance of capitalizing on the window of opportunity right now. By fostering brand loyalty throughout the holiday season, retailers can ensure to lasting impact that, that extend well into the new year, 
setting the stage for sustained success in Q1 and beyond. So now let's uh, go through some opportunities and strategies to differentiate your offers and how you can get a better performance from this period of time. First of all, uh, product data is uh, key. We like keep saying this all time, but it's always like a, the, the, I think the starting point for the season again. And it is because to so obvious reasons, product data is the key ingredient of good performance, especially for shopping ads. And marketing maturity study shows two times higher revenue increase in product and business data when it's used. And second, second important reason for that to keep in mind is consumers and what they want to see on Google. Consumers are impatient, demanding, as we saw, saw it's very complex. And uh, Google give a good chance to differentiate beyond price uh, with this product information. So um, second point is the annotations. It's also very related to the product data in here. Annotations and badges are additional information that may be displayed on the shopping ads or your free listings of uh, with your product cards. Um, they help your products stand out and can help increase the performance of your offers. Let's take a look at some of the affiliate uh, data that you can gain from uh, th this different type of product annotations. First of all, the product ratings, uh, they show the average rating of product, which might lead up to 5% CTR lift. And then we have merchant promotions that show your promotions that lead to 28% of CVR lift, free shopping and fast shopping options that help you 2% CVR lift, sales price and price drop annotations, provide you 7.6% uh, CTR lift. And finally, we have returns annotations that might up to uh, that might provide up to 3% conversion value uplift. So we say make sure that you utilize them. It's like easy to set up. We have all those information uh, in the support pages available online. And if you have any questions, you can also sh uh, keep shooting out. And my uh, colleague Ruth also there, I think she uh, will be able to help. So here comes my last, uh, not least section. I would like to share some uh, pro tips before handing it over to Thomas uh, for shopping campaigns. And uh, yes, proxy planning is very crucial for this holiday season success. And uh, we recommend setting marketing objectives well in advance for that reason. And ideally, uh, really early, early uh, amount of before, this time is really good for that. And this ensures your marketing efforts are strategically aligned with your overall business goals. And you have ample time for execution and testing if uh, very necessary uh, to get the, the best performance. And uh, remember, the holiday season is a highly competitive period. By starting early and refining your strategy with this, uh, these questions, you can maximize your chances of success and achieve your business goals. And uh, your goals should be quantifiable, time-bound, and measurable so you can like uh if you already set up your goals maybe it's time for you to revise them for this like three uh, important uh points during the holiday season with increased demand and competition it's also crucial to dynamically adjust your ROAS targets to maximize your profitability because profitability as we know is getting more and more important for all of us for that, first of all, you need to identify the break-even ROAS for each of your key product categories. This is the minimum return on ad spend needed to cover your cost and that you can avoid any losses, so it makes you still profitable. And then next, you need to determine the optimal return on advertising spend, which is the point where you achieve the highest profit margin while still maintaining a healthy level of ad spend. And finally, uh, compare this uh, to your current return on advertising spend to see where your adjustments might be needed. We also have a pro tip here uh, to gradually uh, uh, re um, reduce your uh, ROAS. Once your optimal ROAS is identified, we recommend a strategy to gradually lowering it, targets by week by week, and also like checking it and moving towards to your break even point. This will allow you to capture more sales volume as demand increases, while also ensuring that you remain profitable. Google's AI can be a valuable asset here. 
as it can quickly adapt to any further target adjustments that uh, may be required during peak periods, helping you to stay agile and responsive uh, to market changes. And remember, finding the sweet spot for ROAS is an ongoing process. It's required constant monitoring and adjustment throughout the holiday season. By using data-driven insights and leveraging AI capabilities, you can optimize your ad spend and achieve maximum profitability. We mentioned about deal-seeking shoppers, and uh, and I want to like touch them again. And they are not just waiting for Black Friday or Cyber Monday. They are actively searching for deals throughout the holiday season, which, I, as I showed you, we see as like four months long period uh, timeline. And it also starts as early as September. It might be already like uh, we, we we see the increase in demand and the searches right now, and moving towards the October. This means businesses need to be prepared with your promotions and discounts and well in advance uh, for this uh, period. And we see this trend also reflected in the data, as you can see here. 75% of shoppers surveyed admitted to actively looking for deals. Google search, search data confirms a significant increase in deal-related searches starting in uh, September. And Google search plays a very critical role in this process. And um, we encourage you to start planning the holiday promotions early and robust Google search strategy in place to capture, capture deal-seeking shoppers. And uh, I also want to like touch a little bit of the Performance Max uh, and Google with uh, Google uh, Merchant Center feed. This effic effic uh, efficiently connect with deal-seeking shoppers, uh, both new and the returning one throughout the holiday season. And Performance Max com campaigns, when they combine with your Google Merchant Center feed, will automatically optimize your ads across Google's all channels, search, display, YouTube, discover, Gmail and Maps and everything. This will ensure you reaching the shoppers wherever they are and wherever uh, their purchase journey is. Uh, this will really help you to uh, catch your uh, shoppers. The GMC PF Feed provides detailed product information, allowing Google AI to create highly relevant ads for you and showcase your best deals and promotions. It's important to adjust budgets and ROAS accordingly and then utilize these uh, tools. And I want to like touch also new customer acquisition and segmentation in here that you can use. Uh, the new customer acquisition goal in per Performance Max help you attract shoppers while they're also maximizing uh, revenue from existing customers. It's important to segment holiday campaigns by team or product category. This improves AI learning and allows more targeted messaging and bidding. And we also encourage you to use asset optimization and final URL expansion. Uh, this needs to up upload holiday specific assets at groups well in advance to ensure that the Google AI has, AI has enough time to learn. And uh, also like keep final URL expansion enabled that will allow Google automatically generate additional assets for you. And uh, you can test new search queries, improve overall performance and relevance of your campaigns. And also like pro tip, we also encourage you to enable the video in Performance Max 2. That way you, we see like 12% increase in conversions. And uh, this is also an additional uh, reach for your uh, campaign. As I mentioned in the previous section, it's crucial to manage the budget and capitalize on the potential. I want to like stress it again in here by proactively adjusting your bu budget, optimizing your bids and leveraging headroom for peak periods. You can ensure your ads are seen throughout this period to the right shoppers at the right time. I want to like uh, leave you with a summary of some uh, action points that we have shared today. I hope you found it uh, valuable um, for from now. And in September till uh, this like a uh, four month of period. Uh, first point is testing is crucial. So, so we encourage you to set up one or three AI testing goals that could unlock better performance and plan it uh, at least uh, from six plus weeks uh, to see the full benefits. And then also makes maximizing reach also very important because I mentioned the demand and also consumer behavior complexity. In here, utilizing some format like performance spec next really helps you to increase uh, to reach of your potential customers. Third point is focusing on uh, more than the discounts. Uh, you can utilize, we mentioned the 
product annotations and promotes connecting your physical online stores, optimizing product feeds, ensuring high quality creative and also utilizing AI for assets generations. Those are uh, important things that you can take into account. And finally, analyze and optimize. Use data to understand how often you reach the customers. You run brand demand tests to measure and optimize your impact on sales. Holiday season is fast approaching. As Thomas mentioned, winter is coming. It's already like uh, we can feel it. And uh, by taking these actions now on these fundamentals, you can position your business for a successful and profitable holiday period. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, keep sending your question on the uh, chat. We will uh, answer them uh, at the end. And now I'm uh, giving over to Thomas, who will uh, share uh, six pro tips from Chenevo. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sevnor, for sharing those insights. Um, I was lucky enough to actually be able to hear them because I managed to fix my headset. So uh, we are in a uh, really, really positive vibe right now. Um, cool. Awesome. And uh, I think key takeaway, I mean, such a crucial sentence that you mentioned there, good product data is key to high performance. This is such an underestimated thing. People think it's fine. We have product data. It's cool. It runs, we don't need to, to optimize it. What's optimizing? We don't need to waste time on that. Well, try that and uh, see you have a, a rubbish Black Friday. Okay, we're not gonna turn that into a negative note, uh, just a, a heads up to focus on product data. And that's actually where I'm going to start because I am gonna now dive into what I believe are my six top tips for a successful Black Friday. And the first one I'm gonna start with is about using real-time data for precision. Um, what this essentially boils down to is make sure that your product data is up to date all the time, right? Black Friday is not a regular sales period. And if you have these top selling products which are having amazing deals, you can count on the fact that your best selling sizes or colors are probably gonna sell out at like, 7 a.m. maybe. Well, if that's the case, if you don't have your data updated frequently, then how do we know that these products are sold out? Well, I as a consumer wouldn't know until I actually land on your website and I'm ready to, to give you all my money, except I'm told, oh, sorry, we don't have this shirt in large, so uh, you're gonna go have to put your, put your money somewhere else. Well, that's a bummer, both because you miss the, uh, the revenue from selling that shirt, uh, but also because in theory, you've wasted money on a click there, right? You have um, had to spend money to get me to ultimately come through to your website only to find that your product is sold out. That's a real bummer for you and for me. Um, make sure that you are updating your data in as near to real time as you can to avoid this disappointment and extra cost for yourself, but also the disappointment for the consumer, because they will remember that, <laughs> you know, consumers are like elephants, they remember everything, but mostly the negative experiences. Um, but we can, with that, we can jump on to my second uh, tip, which is about brand consistency. Um, when I talk about brand consistency in this context, the, I bring this up because I know that when we get to Black Friday and Cyber Week or Black Month or whatever you want to call this whole crazy sales period that we have coming up, apparently now, according to Sevenor, this is like a four month period. I get that you want to go flashy and extravagant and out of the box and, you know, throw everything you have at it. And I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I'm not going to say don't be flashy and don't have awesome deals because that's what your consumers kind of expect from you. But be recognizable because there's only so flashy, like so much that you can be flashy before you completely steer away from your brand. And then I, as a consumer, how am I meant to use my brand loyalty if I don't recognize your ad because for 11 months of the year, you have this certain shade of red as your brand color, but suddenly it's Black Friday and all of your, your ads are black and maybe there's a, a funky green one in there as well. I don't associate that with you. So why am I gonna, I mean, even stop on your ad? I mean, we know how far people scroll on their phones, right? We don't stop for ads unless it's something that we recognize. And to be honest, it's gonna be the same on search. If we're searching for a certain product uh, or on shopping ads, if we're searching for something specific, well, if we don't recognize your brand, then you lose all sense of brand loyalty. 
make sure that your brand stays consistent. Be flashy, but still to some extent be consistent. And with that, we can go to the third of my uh, tips, which is about using performance data. Um, now, data is a beautiful thing um, if it's used in a proper way. It, it can also be a very messy thing, but we're not going to get into that side of it. You probably have a boatload of data about all of your sales, all of your products, everything that goes on in your business. You probably have it somewhere. But the question is, are you utilizing it? And are you utilizing past performance data to analyze which products are your top performers? Even during Black Friday, not all of your products are going to be top sellers, right? There's probably this one product that you have somewhere on a shelf over here in your uh, in your inventory that you've never even sold one of, but you have it because you know you wanted to complete the set or whatever in your uh, in your warehouse. Well, that product probably is also not going to sell on Black Friday. So what you need to think about is: is it worth wasting money on clicks for an like for ads for a product that probably isn't going to convert anyway? Probably not, right? But how do you know this if you're not using your data? Segment your products into performance segments. Um, at Channelable, we like to look at the, the segments as uh, stars, potentials, underperformers, and invisibles. And I'm not going to tell you exactly how to categorize your products, what funky names to give them. But if you at least look at your product data in this way, then you're going to know how you need to allocate the budget. Because if you're throwing away half of your budget on a bunch of products that aren't going to sell and only half of your budget on the products that do sell, well, think about if you put all of your budget on this side, right? You're probably going to have the best Black Friday ever because suddenly you're spending the money on products where you know you're going to convert. Stop throwing away money <laughs> on ads that on products that don't convert. This is like, please, I beg of you, please stop throwing away money on this. It's it's pointless. And with that, we can move on to the fourth uh, tip that I have, which is be ready on time. Um, it's a pretty simple one. I mean, there's to be honest, there shouldn't be an, a lot to say about this one, but because people don't do it, there is. You see, for a successful Black Friday. You can't really just activate your ads one week before you know the big day and just assume, oh well, my ads are running, so everything is going to be awesome. You know, we're going to sell tons of products because we've got ads and they were running on time. Well, we need to define on time. And to define on time, we need to look at what are the determining factors. And probably there are, I would say there are two key determining factors. One, your competitors. When do they start advertising? Because if they start advertising today, but you only start a week before the big day, well, they have a lot more data to run on. And we get to the second element, Google's algorithm, right? This mysterious black box that none of us know anything about, except the fact that it seems to favor uh, ads that already have a certain level of ad spend. So if you're only activating your ads a week before Black Friday, well, the algorithm is not going to have enough time to learn which of the combinations of, uh, if I look at search ads, for example, which of the combinations of headlines and descriptions works best for these specific ads. And if it doesn't have enough time to learn, it might be showing pretty rubbish ads because it is not its fault. It just doesn't have the data because it didn't have time to get the data. Start on time, right? Sevnoor has just told us that they expect the period, like the, really the starting period, to be October. That's in 20 days. That's not a lot of days. Like today, I mean, clear your calendar. After this webinar, clear the calendar, set your strategy, make your plan. Because if you're not ready now, damn, you need to be ready by the end of the week. So uh, <laughs> at least clear some time, get a nice little cup of coffee, and plan out your strategy. Because it is so important to be ready on time for Black Friday. And with that, we can go on to a um, yeah the next top tip where I'm going to go on less of a, a rant about uh, hurry up, be ready, and more just focus on um, the consumer mindset. Because whenever you create ads, and I don't just mean for Black Friday actually in this context, but whenever you create search ads, you should always be putting yourself in the mind of your consumer. If you don't like the look of the ad 
as a consumer, well, why do you assume that your own clients are going to like the look of the ad? Why are they going to click on it if you wouldn't click on it yourself? And what do we like as humans? We quite like visuals. We quite like images. So this is why my recommendation is use image extensions on your search ads. This is a, such a great way to increase the likelihood of getting clicks on your ads. And it adds a lot of clarity for the consumer about exactly what product page they are going to be landing on, right? Again, this is a chance for you to save some money. If the consumer has a chance to actually see the, the product before they click on your ad and go through to your landing page and already can kind of evaluate, nah, this is not really the shade of green that I want these shoes in, they probably won't click on that ad. They weren't going to convert anyway because they don't like the product and you've shaved yourself the money on a click that can be put somewhere else for another client that maybe will click on the ad because they saw that shade of green and thought, yeah, I like this one. This goes really well with my top. So let's get these shoes, you know? Um, image extensions are a really, really great way for you to save some money, create clarity for the consumer and coming back to the brand consistency element, show yourself, you know, show you as a brand. And that takes me to my final top tip, the sixth top tip in my list. Uh, I feel like I've said top tip far too many times for one day. Um, and this is to consider the multi-channel approach. Now, I love Google, right? Every time I personally want to search for something, Google is my go-to. And I'm not just saying that because you're here, Sevnur, but I do love Google. Google's ace, okay? Um, but Google is not everything. And that's important to keep in mind. You might not want to block your ears for this part, Sifnor, because Google is not everything, okay? There are so many other channels out there that you need to consider. And as Sifnor has so nicely pointed out to us, consumers do their research. Consumers shop around. So let's, let's imagine a story, right? I wake up at 7 a.m. The first thing I do, because <laughs> I'm 26, I grab my phone. I love my phone, I'm addicted to it. And the first thing I do is I'm gonna to go to Facebook or Instagram, probably more Instagram, Facebook's like, no, that, okay. I'm gonna to go to Instagram and I'm gonna start scrolling through my ads, right? Or my feed, which is probably 50% ads at this stage. And I'm gonna see this really nice shoe that I'd previously been searching for in the weeks running up to Black Friday, right? The shoe store knows that I'm on the, I'm, I'm on the hunt for shoes. So they've caught me on Facebook. They've shown me this shoe, but I need to get up and get ready for work. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy that shoe there and then. I don't have time for that. But then I'm sitting on the train on my way to work an hour later. And then, you know, suddenly I'm scrolling through TikTok and I'm seeing that ad again, you know, and I'm noticing that ad because it's stuck with the brand consistency. I can tell that it's coming from the same company. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's a good reminder. I wanna I wanna check this out later. You know, then I'm having lunch and I'm on some other social media platform. Again, I'm shown this product because they know I'm ready to buy shoes. I just need to be nudged a little, little bit. By the end of the day, I've probably made up my mind. I've seen this shoe enough time, God knows that. And I'm actually ready to convert. But my first place to go when I'm ready to uh, actually buy my shoe is going to be Google. I'm going to search for this shoe. But I wouldn't do if I hadn't been reminded all throughout the day on all the different channels that I am on that I need to buy this shoe, right? Personally, I'm on the market for a PlayStation 5 this uh, this Black Friday. All of my colleagues here know that. That's not a secret. But they also know that I'm already looking on all of the different websites here in the Netherlands to find out which one has it cheapest right now. And where do I kind of expect this to be cheapest around Black Friday? And those are going to be my starting points. But as like anyone else, not anyone else, but me, I'm quite lazy. So I click on the first thing that I see on Google and usually that's an ad, right? And because I keep clicking on these ads, sorry to the tech companies here in the Netherlands, you probably paid quite a lot of money on ads that haven't converted because of me, because I just wanted to check, you know, what the current price was now. Um, but when we get to Black Friday, I've already made my mind up. I'm getting that PlayStation 5, but where am I going to get it? I need to find out but you need to have been on time. I need to have seen your ad everywhere. Your ad needs to look like what it does the rest of the year. All these elements boil down into one. Be ready, be present, be everywhere. And that's pretty much it. That's what I want to say about how you should approach the Black Friday coming up. Just get started. Now, none of this should be new 
to the digital marketeers or e-com managers or whatever your roles are sitting out there. If it is new, okay, you might need to do a bit more, bit more learning for your role because this is kind of Black Friday 101, okay? But just because it's Black Friday 101, it doesn't mean it can't help to get a kick up the backside once in a while and be reminded what's important also from your consumer mindset. So anyone out there selling PlayStation 5s, please let me know. I might come and give you my money when we get to Black Friday. And otherwise, I will um, wrap up my part here uh, and we can jump to the last slide here, Sevnoor, um, which is about us wanting to be friends with you. Um, thank you for, ah, first of all, please, a poll has just popped up on your screen, actually. Please let us know how you thought the content of this webinar was. Was it perfect? Was it a bit too advanced? Or was it too basic? This is going to help us shape our webinars of the future, because we do have the idea to turn this into a series of webinars um, called Selling Smart with Google and Channable. And to be able to make that into a series, we first need to know what you guys like, what you don't like, and what we need to do more of. Uh, we also really, really want to be friends with you. Um, so if you want to be friends with us, go ahead and scan the QR codes on your screen right now. These will take you to our respective LinkedIn pages. There may be questions that you don't feel comfortable asking in the chat here that are very specific to your use case or whatever. Uh, reach out to us and we'll take all those questions also as we get to them. Um, cool. And now I'm going to breathe and we're going to take a look at the, uh, at the chat. I see, uh, there are a lot of messages that have been coming in and I think Ruth and you have been uh, very busy, uh, taking care of a lot of these questions. And with that, I think we're ready to close up the session. Thank you everybody for joining and, uh, a very good, uh, a very good luck with your Black Friday, 2024.